Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 135. Nasdaq's up 103. S&P's are up 19. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the first hour. Don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Real easy to get it. As you uh, come over to our website, at TFNN, you're going to see right under Featured Content, you hit Mastering Probability. You can hit Subscribe. You can get this newsletter for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199. You get it for a year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593, uh, 33%. And when you get Steve's newsletter, folks, you're going to get a huge amount of added bonuses uh, with the workshops that he has done in the past. Check it out right on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Game seven is going on. Oh, man, I'm telling you, that was something else, wasn't it? It was. It, you know, I, I know we both watched, uh, you know, the series. And uh, game five, which is typically which is typically the pivotal game, yes. right? Because it all of a sudden swings in your possession. You're one way away right. from, uh, from the Stanley Cup out there. And, you know, what, what had shocked me is because last Monday when we talked about it, uh, the, the, the passing and the play of the uh, of the Bruins was just spectacular and yet uh and that game 5 i, I mean the the St. Louis Blues they showed up in full force oh, yeah. i mean it was as if they stole the game that the Bruins had yet in game 6 last night it was as if the Blues didn't even show up i, I mean it was just the the skating that was going on they were so lethargic so slow. Yeah. Um, so, but hey, the and the good back news and forth. Is, you know, if you had been watching these games, folks, what had happened? That Steve's talking. The, the game five, you had a flow going, and that actually, whatever, whatever side had it, would have it for two or three minutes at a time. Yeah. The last yeah. night game was just a brawl. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Like, you Absolutely. Know. Yeah. So, so Wednesday night, Wednesday night will be the thriller in uh, Boston. Yeah. So, uh, and you know, uh, it's interesting. I said to Tommy this morning, this is the first time since 1981, folks, that you have a seventh game Stanley Cup. Well, seventh game anything in Boston. Last time was uh, the Celtics, and they won. They won in uh, 81. Okay. Okay. So, well, Boston to, folks will be shutting down uh, Tuesday, Wednesday morning. Trust me. No doubt. This. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no doubt. Probably New that. England will be shutting down. <laughs> yeah. I would think so. I would. So, I'm looking forward to oh, it. Oh, big time, hey, man. Big yeah, time. yeah. So, I thought what we could do here is just kind of pick up uh, from from last Monday. Okay. Uh, because when we when we were doing the uh, when we were doing these the segment during last Monday, the number of charts that I had shown, and and I want to just reshow those and then the update. Uh, to those charts. So what I first want to do is make sure that folks understand that, hey, look, here's the cycle that we are in right now. And what I've done is uh, this is the seasonal cycle for the Dow, and I've created this little rectangular area yes. that uh, really picks up the seasonal cycle during the so-called unfavorable portion or the sell in May portion of it. And what I want folks to understand is what's going on in the market right now is not unusual during the cycle, which I do believe is in effect. Uh, and it became in effect once we broke through the lows in April out here. So this little rectangular area and what we are experiencing or seeing in the market is normal. Um, so I want to just begin with that. And and I knew that last week when we were taking a look at it, I didn't put the, rec the rectangle in. Uh, but what I knew was that we had taken a look at the New York Stock Exchange and two divergences that have been associated with other bottoms. Those two divergences are where the advanced decline oscillator reading, that's in the center panel here, is making higher lows. And at the same time, the spot volatility index, which is the bottom panel, was making lower highs. And it does that in the face of seeing lower lows in price in the New York Stock Exchange, which is the top panel. And there are several other occurrences that I have noted on this chart that uh, show those other bottoms that form. But we can't use this chart as the uh, timing mechanism. We just are aware of those divergences and we need to look at other charts. So for example, uh, and this is one week later here. Well, first I want to say one week later, we can see that those divergences were meaningful. We can see that the um, we can see that the advanced decline oscillator reading, when I took this snapshot maybe an hour ago, was at the plus 119 level. And I do believe it's targeting the 150 area before we see the next high inside the market. The S&P 500, I said last week, may be completing the Gertley buy pattern. 
And if we take a look at the update, well, we know that it, in fact, did complete a Gartley buy pattern. It did that on Tuesday. On Monday, uh, during the show, subscribers and I began a position inside the Dow Transports because of a bullish key reversal candle. I'm not showing that right now, but we began our long positions in the market. And then by Tuesday, we took long positions inside the S&P, the Dow, the Russell 2000, because of the bottoming patterns that are out there. In this case here, it looks like the S&P may be headed to 29 37. That's the target that I have in place right now for where the S&P is headed to. The Russell 2000, last week I said may be completing a Gartley buy pattern. And as we fast forward to where we're at right now, it most certainly did. It completed the Gartley buy pattern. I don't have it drawn in here. Just to simply show where price is likely headed to, which is a solid green line that goes across my screen in the 1546 level. That's where I anticipate that the Russell 2000 will head to before it runs into its next level of resistance. This also completed what I call the TD setup nine count pattern. You mentioned uh, subscribers or new subscribers uh, to Mastering Probability gain uh, a number of bonuses, those bonuses being workshops that show folks how to be able to spot or identify a bottom or a top. The NDX 100, I said, was completing or maybe completing the Gertley buy pattern. Now, when I say uh, completing the pattern or maybe, it's because I'm always looking. I love your squawks, walks, and talks with regard to what markets do. You use volume. I use candlesticks. And I specifically use Japanese candlesticks at the completion of a pattern. And inside the NDX 100, when it generated on Tuesday this bull sash candle, it completed the pattern for me. Now, Inside the NDX 100, I would have ordinarily taken a look at this resistance line, this TD setup resistance line at 74.72, but price now today is above that level. That suggests that we have even higher to go inside the NDX 100, even potentially all the way back up to its weekly horizontal trading range level in the 78.75 area. If I take a look at the Dow last week on Monday, we said, hey, look, the Dow looks like it's completing the Gartley buy pattern, as well as a TD setup nine count pattern that was out there. In order for those patterns, and also Rhodes Momentum Indicator Bottom, all these are tools that I share with subscribers, the exact formulas on how to be able to use these for any time frame for any instrument. And what we can see here, price was pushing lower, doing less relative energy, and then we get the bullish reversal signal. It happened to be a three candlestick signal, the three river morning star, very bullish uh, candle configuration. And this says to me that the Dow should head to its resistance line. That really be the resistance line established by the actual breakdown of this nine count pattern that I use. That says 26,689 is in the cards. Now I'll look for 30 minute charts. I'll look for levels of support to be broken. Those are these red lines here. Here's the Dow Equity Futures contract. We can see the ES Mini. We can also see the NQ. No levels of support have been broken. If there's going to be some earlier top, we'll see these levels of support get broken inside the, the, any of the futures contracts, which has not occurred as we speak just yet. Let us not forget, we are in a consolidation pattern inside of the Dow. It's very clearly shown here, and we, this means we have a two-way trading market, very much like the Boston Bruins and St. Louis, mm, exchanging yes. blows out here. So that's where we're at, and... Um, you got to love it. Yeah, go and listen, it. folks, the way you get Steve's newsletter, come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go right under Featured Content, Mastering Probability. You hit subscribe. You are off to the races. Steve, thanks so much, man. Have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom.